Hi, everybody. St. John's Presbyterian Church, Max Lynn. I am here in my backyard, and you're looking at the poppies. And poppies are always amaze me because they they kind of grow up in the cracks and in the weeds and and look beautiful even though they grow in the craziest of places. And I think it's applicable to our passage this this morning. Jeez, there's several passages we're looking at. They're all beautiful. Um, Psalm 139, um, one of my very favorite uh, psalms. Uh, I'll just read a little bit of it. Um, that's the one, you know, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. And then uh, God knows you for sure knows every word on our tongue. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make it my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. And then over in Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 25, I just give you a snippet of that as well. Um, you are led by the Spirit of God as the children of God. We are co-heirs with Christ. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So that impulse to call out to God is the Spirit itself inside of us. And so we are children of God and heirs, co-heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. And then talks about the creation. And at the end it says, this, uh, We who have the first spirits groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is no hope. For who hopes for, for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And then in Matthew chapter 13, 24 uh, through 43, we get a couple more parables of the sower. And this one is where the wheat grows up with weeds and uh, the, the, the workers go to the owner and say, should we, you know, yank them out now? And he says, no, no, wait. And later on at the harvest time, we're going to separate uh, the weeds and and bind them in bundles to be burned and gather the wheat into the barn. I think all of these are about hope. All of these passages are about hope. And it's about while we're in the middle of trial and tribulation. So it's about hope when we can't see reason for hope. When the facts may not be warranted to hope, but we hope anyway. Hope is generated. So I'm re reading a bit from a book called uh, uh, How We Change and Ten Reasons Why We Don't by Ross Ellenhorn, a good friend of mine when I was a kid in high school. Uh, hope is generated by the tension of betweenness. I'm further along than I was yesterday. I'm taking a step towards something right now, and I know what goal I want to reach. It's about past, present, and future. So when we have that goal up there and ahead of us, it sets, a, it sets our mind about in the world the way we want to go. Hope holds you together. Ross says, while you struggle with feeling that you lack something important, something you need, and it keeps you going even when you don't get this need met immediately. 
Winston Churchill captures this understanding of hope in his most famous speech, given at Britain's darkest hour when he stood alone against the seeming unstoppable Nazi onslaught. We shall, not, we shall go on to the end, he proclaimed. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and in the oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Churchill is speaking more about fighting than winning, says Ross, not giving up or giving in. His speech combines a longing for something better with a call for moving forward in the present towards a goal, whether things get better or not. That's hope. A central aspect of hope is when the way looks blocked, to find an alternative, to never give up. That is a central element of hope. Finding ways around, below, above, and through the obstacles. So the psalmist says, no matter where you go, no matter how dark the hour, no matter how lost it may seem that we are, God is there. Keep hope. God will not forsake or abandon us. Even when we are in the thick of the weeds, they threaten to choke us out. Have hope, says Jesus. God will sort it out in the end. Never give up, Paul says. Nobody and no thing can separate us from God. We have been adopted as co-heirs with Christ. We are children of God. Even when somebody has their knee on our neck, we are adopted co-heirs with God, co-heirs with Christ. We are to stay strong, even when it means suffering like Christ. Hope Hope against all odds, never give up. Hope that is seen is not hope at all. Now there's a paradox to hope. Hope is the leading cause of despair, says Ross. And I think we see this today. I don't know about you, but much of my fear and anxiety and despair comes not from the challenge of the actual coronavirus, but with the disappointing way our people are responding with further division and ideas of grand conspiracies that make no sense whatsoever. We had hoped our nation was better than this. We had hoped we would elect, we wouldn't, wouldn't couldn't elect a bombastic, divisive narcissist. It breaks our heart. We have this great hope of rec racial reconciliation, and so we are forced to watch cold-blooded murder by a police officer. It enrages us. It challenges us. It shows us our own powerlessness and complicity. It feels like we have climbed the stairwell of civil rights and equality to the very real and significant height of having elected a black president twice and now we have slipped back over the side. Perhaps we are not the ones who fell and died with our son Kevin. But make no mistake, our hope fell with him. In the same way, we can, we, <clears throat> I can't dare to claim to have an equal share of the pain and suffering and unjust death as African Americans do. But so many of us have internalized the hope and dream of a nation of diversity and equality and common humanity. And a very real part of us, a part of the very life force that drives us, has been choked out. The greater and more significant of our hope, the greater the despair of not reaching it. So hope doesn't negate despair. It keeps you going on despite it, driving you forward even when despair, even when you despair and cannot quite acquire the thing that you want right now. Who hopes for what they see? Hope that is seen is not hope. So the kingdom of God, the hope of heaven, the faith in God and Jesus, they are not just about the future. They are about keeping us faithful, keeping us moving, keeping us hopeful even to fight against despair, fight against giving in or joining the fearful and greed-driven world of the flesh. So even as we despair, we will not give up. We will fight this virus with all our scientific might. 
with our mutual cooperation and patience. We will fight this economic hardship. There will be some suffering, but let us suffer for health. Let us suffer as we sacrifice for each other, for the community, nation, and world. We will fight this racism. We will root it out. We will fight it in our own being. We will fight it in our police force and justice system. We will fight it in our immigration system. We will fight it in our foreign policy. We will fight it in our church. We have some difficult days ahead. It's hard to tell if we are going backward or forward, but we know which direction God has called us to go. We know because we know the way of Jesus. And we're going to stay on that way, all the way to the promised land. And even if it looks like we're losing, even if we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, we know that even darkness is not dark to God. And God is with us. Hope. Hope today. Hope tomorrow. Hope forever. Never give up.